Welcome everyone. So this is a webinar focused on getting ready for conferences and how Seesaw can really support you in that endeavor and all the amazing work that you're going to be sharing with families as they come and visit you. I just want to give you a little glimpse about what we are going to talk about here today. I'm Angela from Seesaw, if you're just joining in, and we are going to talk about gathering those work samples, getting your folders ready, having your students build in that reflection piece while you know they're getting ready to either share at conferences or you are sharing at conferences and then of course it's a great opportunity to connect families so if you haven't ever joined a webinar before just a couple things to note is you're going to get the recording emailed to you automatically if you registered for this webinar and you're going to get the slides as well so keep that in the back of your mind as we are going through some of the materials i have for you here today so i just thought it would be good to pause for a moment and just reflect a minute on i guess me personally but i'm guessing you're in a similar situation as what is the whole point of conferences right so we're really showing our student growth we're talking about the whole student and not you know just maybe their test scores we're talking about and not even talking about, but really making sure that partnership between home and school and families is really, really solid. And it's, it's two-way communication that happens at those conferences. And of course, goal setting also takes place. And I mentioned these things because that, those are the, the four points that came to the top of my mind thinking about conferences. And they're also very well aligned with all all the things that Seesaw can do for you. So I know it's just a great tool to really maximize your time at conferences. So not even maximize your time, but really do all those things really, really well. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is just gathering those samples, gathering that student work, and what are you actually going to share at the conferences? So I know a lot of people have different approaches to this. And um, unfortunately, you may be a little bit like I was in this picture of a massive amount of folders stacked. So I remember pre CESA, I would, you know, it was a situation where I'm collecting, you know, 24 writing folders and I'm hauling them home in my little wheelie cart and I'm sitting on my, you know, living room floor and trying to collate 25 different stacks of papers. And I know some of you might be doing that right now as we're watching and participating in this uh, webinar. But I had personally an aha moment when I thought, why am I just not adding it to Seesaw once I started using Seesaw? So what I did, it was for me, it was the moment where I was trying to haul those writing folders home again. And I said, well, if I just take a picture of their writing sample, it's in Seesaw, it's gonna be organized in the writing folder. I'm not hauling all this stuff home. And then I also thought, wow, let's let's involve the students in this process, right? Let's add their their layer of reflection. And I thought it's so simple if I'm just even starting as simple as taking a photo and adding that work to Seesaw. So some of you might be thinking, yes, I already do that, which is awesome. But some of you might be having that aha moment just as I did, thinking, why am I hauling all this all this other stuff home? I can just do it in Seesaw easily. So I'm going to talk about a couple options for that if you're thinking oh that's a great idea why why haven't i done that yet um so the first thing i did was i started thinking about what do i actually want to share and show at conferences and i thought about what i did before i used seesaw and how that could be replaced or included in seesaw so things like i always had a writing sample a fluency check or you know latest progress in math all sorts of things like that so you have a couple of options. So first of all, you as a teacher, as a reminder, can always post to the student journal. So by just tapping that green add button, go to post to student journal and you know you can take a picture of their writing or add other work samples that way. Another favorite of mine, and this worked great with my kindergartners, is students can just post on their own, okay? So if they go to that gigantic green add button, they're totally set and can just be adding this content as well really, really easily. So again, I did this every day with my kindergartners and I know a lot of you out there already have your students posting. So you're probably nodding your head right now saying yes, yes. Um, but another option, if you haven't yet explored this and I would recommend this, 
if you have in your mind mapped out those things that you want to present and share at conferences and they're not yet in Seesaw, a great way is to actually create an activity and share that with your students. So on this slide, I'm just going through this flow a little bit. So on the left, you'll see an activity that I found in the Seesaw Activity Library. I'm gonna share that with my students. And when I do that, I have the option here in the center to actually edit the folder that this piece of work is going to go into, which is amazing because it's already saving me some more time organization wise. And then on the right, you'll notice in this particular class, I have all sorts of folders already set up. And so I would just tag that. And then when that activity is shared with the students and they respond, those things are already gonna go in that folder, which is amazing and a time saver. And you also know, you know, what samples you already have from each student and see what students you might need to follow up on. So this is, again, an example of, you know, including their latest writing performance or sample from Writer's Workshop. So in my kindergarten classroom, we actually did at the end of each month, they picked out their favorite writing piece to make sure they had in Seesaw. So if you haven't done that yet, um, that would it would be a great opportunity to just start with maybe the latest one so i wanted to pause here for a moment and read a couple things that that came through my mind when i was transitioning to really using seesaw as an amazing tool for conferences and these are these are common questions that i hear a lot from our community as well so things like well they've already seen it in seesaw now what am i going to show them at conferences they've already seen this work it's already been posted or, but I don't want families to see the work until conferences. So two things going on there. And again, I have said these things myself as I started using Seesaw. I had a, a moment, of, moment of panic because I thought, well, my conferences aren't going to look the same anymore as they have in years past. So what I realized is kind of are kind of my three stars down here. Number one, let's make it less about the reveal, right? So I found that when I did that, I was way less rushed during the conference. I had way more time to actually engage in meaningful conversations with families. And there weren't surprises. Families don't really like surprises. They really, really don't. Um, in my experience, I think you might have similar experience as well. But I also, I think the biggest eye opener to me was I had that fear of, oh my gosh, they've already seen it. Or, oh gosh, I don't want them to see it yet. And what I realized is when I just went for it, I think the biggest takeaway for me was we could talk beyond the the reveal. Okay, so they already knew about this, but I was adding more context. I was showing growth over time, and then we could talk more about next steps and really have time for for questions. So I encourage you, if you were like me, asking these same questions and having a little bit of fear about that, to just give it a go. And I think I think you're never going to turn back and totally love it. With that being said, I'm going to talk a little bit about folders because I mentioned them earlier. And this goes a little bit into the conversation of what families can see and, and not if you are interested in that. But we're going to talk a little bit about emojis in folders. But I kind of gave that that was two that was a, that, that, that was a quick reveal there. I wasn't trying to do that. I want to actually go into one of my classes here because I'm going to demo this for you. And I know some of you already have folders set up, but I'm going to do a quick demo for people that don't yet have folders set up. So here we go. So here's your Seesaw class, right? I'm signed in as a teacher. And if you're thinking, ah, you know, I already have work in there or I've added work. Now I want it organized. So what you can do is I'm actually going to scroll to the top, this example. Um, I'm going to tap the folder icon right under this post. So once I tap there, it actually is going to bring up the folders that I have already created for this class. You can see I have, you know, all sorts of different folders, but for the purpose of today, I'm going to create a conference folder, which is what I suggest you might do. I've also called this folder in the past wow work. So if that's something that resonates with your kids, go ahead and say that too. So I am going to create a folder. So I'm gonna tap on this button right here. And what I'm gonna do actually is this is kind of a pro tip. I am on a MacBook and I'm at getemoji.com. If you are using iPads, you can do, you can actually type emojis, but I had a little emoji. I'm gonna see if I can find it that I thought would be perfect for conferences. And of course, as I'm scrolling right now, I'm, you know, 
I'm going to not not find the exact ideal one that I want. Oh, no, it's this one. So I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna actually going to go back here. I'm going to paste it. Did you know that you can do that? How fun, right? So I'm going to call this conferences, like I said, or you could call it wow work. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot, a little period in front of the name of this. I'm going to do a fun color. And the reason that I put a dot there is I'm going to do this green check. And what, does, what do you notice? It is at the top of my list of folders. So if you want your students involved and you're working with younger students, if you want them involved in actually tagging folders with work, um, this is a great way to just make it even easier for them. So for littles, this little picture cue of this emoji is awesome when you're typing in the name to insert an emoji or add it. And then I can just do the green check and you'll see that this piece of work has gone into the conference folder. So what is handy about this is that on the right here with all of your students, you can sort by folders. So for example, if, if Karina's parents are coming in, not only can I filter to Karina, so everything here will show all of her posts in her entire portfolio. But if I'm thinking, oh, that's too overwhelming, I wanna focus on just a few pieces for the point of this discussion, I would tap here on this folder, and then I can choose which folder I would like to focus on, and I would, of course, say conference folder, right? which I don't have anything in there yet. So in order to prepare for this, I'm just gonna tag a couple things with conferences. And you'll notice if work is already in Seesaw, you see what I'm doing here, right? I'm just tag tapping the folder under it. And of course, I would actually be selecting only the work I want to show at conferences, not everything. So again, if I'm in the class journal, I'm gonna see everything from all students. But if I wanna to go to a unique student like Karina right here, and then go to her conference folder, I can tap the folder on the right, and then conferences, and boom, there we go. I have all of my posts that I wanna share with families right here. Really, really handy dandy. The other thing I wanna just note, and this might come in handy later in the year for you is this print PDF. When you add content to folders, you can actually print the entire folder of work up to 80 posts with this print PDF button. And again, I'm on the web showing that. So make sure you do that. Okay, a couple other things about folders is if I go in the upper right to my wrench, my class settings, and I scroll down, if you are new to folders, scroll down to this folders section and make sure this show add to folder step is actually turned to students and teachers if you want your students to be able to add work to folders. If you only want you yourself to add work to folders, just make sure it's checked with teachers. So at the kindergarten level, I did not have my students add work to folders at the beginning of the year, but I think actually by November conferences, they were adding work to folders. And I think the activity flow actually makes it even easier where they don't even have to do that. You can do that for them if you're choosing to do it that way. Okay, so lots of info about folders. And I'm gonna go back here into my slides for a moment to show you a few more things. So again, if you wanna know more about emojis, we have a little video about how you get them on a Chromebook. I was on a MacBook, so you saw that. But if you go to getemoji.com, they actually have tutorials about any device and how you get emojis on any device, if that is something you like to add to your folders. So let's talk about something else to get ready for conferences. I think it's a perfect time to give your students a chance to reflect and set some goals. So I think a great way to do that is through our activities feature. Again, you might already have ways that you're doing this in your class, like favorite you know, activities that they've already done. You can simply Take a photo of that, add a voice recording in Seesaw on your set. But if you're looking for maybe something new, these are activities that you can, when you get the slides emailed to you, you can save these and actually be ready to use them tomorrow. So on the left here, you see more of a primary example of goal setting. So maybe these your students have thought about their hopes and dreams at the beginning of the school year, and it's a logical time to check in with those and see if they want to adjust. And then on the right, I have more of an intermediate upper elementary example of two stars and a goal, meaning what, what are two things that they've done really well and what's a goal, a new idea for a goal they, they would like to, 
to work towards. So again, these are activities that you can use and get, again, your students involved in that reflection process. If you go into the Seesaw Activity Library, I want to actually show you something here quick. So if I'm signed in as a teacher again and I go to Browse Activity Library, the other thing that you can actually do is if you search conferences, you're going to come up with all sorts of um, activities that other teachers have already included with themselves getting ready for conferences. So that is another way to kind of save yourself some time and see what's already existing so that you can take advantage of that as well. So let's keep chatting and then we're gonna have time for questions. So the other thing is let's talk about getting those families connected. So tons of you here live today already have family members connected, which is awesome. And for those of you that don't yet, I'm gonna show you a couple things. So on this slide, this is these are this is for my my teachers out there today that don't or that have family members connected, but maybe you have some family members that aren't yet connected. So I have this reference here in the slide, but I'm actually going to demo live um, both options really. So if you're a teacher and you haven't yet connected family members, conferences is a prime time while you're face to face with them to really get them connected to your Seesaw class. You will not regret it and they're going to love it. You're going to love it. The students are going to love it. It's going to be amazing. So when you're ready to do that, just in the bottom right, just click on this plus families button. You can turn on family access and then you can print the paper invites. This is what I would suggest if you're meeting face to face with with families to have it right there ready to go. And if I tap this button, you, those of you that are already have family members connected, you know this, but Seesaw is doing all the work for you, right? So we are creating all of these handouts for each unique student. So this is Avi's handout. This is Karina's handout. And again, these QR codes are unique to that specific child. So what I have, what I have done personally is if I had family members that weren't yet connected, and I'm going to show you that in a moment, how to determine who, who is and is not connected. Um, we sat face to face at conferences and I said, Hey, you know, I'd love, I think you would enjoy being connected to Seesaw to see what your student is reflecting and sharing. And really it was sometimes just a matter of, you know, let's download the app if they want to do it on their phone or let's, you know, let me give them this handout so they can take it home and be ready to go. Um, it was just a great another great opportunity. So I highly encourage you to take advantage of that. I want to scroll back here for a moment because this will also show you if you have already invited families, this will also show you currently connected parents. OK, so you'll have a list that have connections already so you don't have to worry about that but I also want to show you this way so if you already have families connected if you go to the wrench in the upper right and then you go scroll down to manage families if you click here it actually has it divided for you so it will show you a list of not connected families so it'll show you the students and then you would just, of course, prepare those invites for those families and be all set to go. So again, I think it's a great time to take advantage of that face-to-face -face time to, to get them connected with what their child is doing on Seesaw. And of course, it's always an option. They don't have to download an app. It's always an option too. They could just go to the website app.seesaw.me to see their child's work as well. Now we're gonna go into questions here for our remaining time. We have about almost 10 minutes, but I also wanna just give a little shout out because in about 25 minutes, I'm gonna start my next webinar that's all about family communication for those of you teaching pre-K too. So if you wanna register for that, there is the link right there. It's also on our PD's site for registering for even this webinar. So if you made it here, you can probably make it um, to that one as well. If you are curious just more about all the things you can do with family communication in Seesaw, so you can join us in a little bit for that. 
but I am going to go to my question slide and eagerly answer the questions that you have coming in. So take a moment and type in some questions and I'm going to go ahead and go through these questions. While you're typing in questions, those of you that are watching the recording, so glad that you're here as well. Just note that we've got tons of webinars always happening here at Seesaw and lots on our YouTube channel as well. And for those of you live, we are gonna have a survey that comes up at the end of this webinar and we love, love, love for you to fill it out. Gives us a lot of feedback, lets us know what you want to hear and learn about. So please take time to do that, but let's go into some questions. <laughs> 